Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to WHIT Radio's Jeffersonians. What we do is a political show, and we talk about numerous topics every week. I'm here uh, with Alyssa, Nisarg, Brian, Leah, and hold on, Natalia. How are you guys? I'm your host, Michael. Good. You guys doing great? Yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. Today we're going to be discussing a very prevalent topic, the government shutdown, and the upcoming uh, debt ceiling. But first, we need to get a little background on what the government shutdown is. Alyssa, tell us a little about it. Okay, Michael. Mm -hmm. A shutdown is triggered when Congress cannot agree on a spending bill. When this disagreement occurs, the government does not have the legal authority to spend any money. It's been 17 years since federal government last faced a partial shutdown because Congress and the President could agree on the spending bill. The longest shutdown in history was from December 16, 1995 through January 5, 1996, oh which was 21 shutdown. days long. Wow. And I believe that was between uh, Bill Clinton and Newt Ging Gingrich. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Um, as of now, our government is shut down, but uh, the reason why is not exactly clear uh, to all the folks out there. Uh, Nisark, why don't you tell us why our government is shut down? All right, Michael. Well, the Congress is unable to agree because the Republican-controlled House passed a spending bill that maintains special spending levels but does not provide funding to implement the Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare. In contrast, the Democratic Senate feels that the program should be completely funded and that Congress should pass a continuing resolution without policy changes. So support of... Go right, right. <laughs> no, um. absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, what do you guys think? Let's go around here, uh, starting with Alyssa. Whose side are you on now? I think it's very hard to be on a, on a certain side, but exactly whose side are you on? I really don't have a side, but mm. I think we'll all benefit more if we get the Affordable Care Act passed. Right. So. I absolutely agree with you on that one because we're talking when we talk about the Affordable Care Act, we're talking about health insurance to people that just can't afford it. We're talking about uh, medical care. Uh, to people that wouldn't be able to have it uh, any other way. Uh, Nisarg, what do you think about uh, Republicans, Democrats? Who, whose side are you on? Indifferent? Um, I'm mostly blaming the Republicans because, mm -hmm. well, obviously Obama is a Democratic and mm -hmm. he wants to get this passed, but the Republicans are really not going with it. Right, They're right. the one that's causing the problems. Right, right. Brian, what do you think? Um, I mostly blame the Republicans because of the because of the fact that um, they're making this whole big issue and surrounding their arguments that it's because of the Obamacare that it's too expensive for the government to take care of. Mm. And then we also have to take into account that there's uh, lower class families that don't have the opportunities upper class families have. So they should just allow right, the no bill to be passed. No, I see what you mean. Uh, what about you, uh, Alyssa? Uh, we, got, we got you, Alyssa. Leah, what do you think? Well, <coughs> before I elaborate on why I would like to explain a little bit how I see it mm. and a lot of people have been talking about the Republicans and the Democrats the whole government the whole country is a family and I think that's really good because if you compare let's say the Democrats to a mom mm. and the Republicans to a dad mm. and the mom wants to give something that's really good and really helpful but a little bit expensive to the children like let's say laptops but they're very necessary even though they're a little bit expensive and the mom and the dad have already decided after a lot of fighting that they're going to give them to them right. but the father knows that the children are going to love the mother a lot more if the mother whose idea this was gives the laptops to the children so what does the father do well he can't take away the laptops he already bought them and promised them to the children mm. so instead he locks the whole family out of their house that's exactly that's that's <laughs> how it is Good job. Uh, and unfortunately uh these laptops could be life or death because we are comparing it to essential medical care uh but what about you natalia what do you think um i guess it is kind of like the republicans fault mm. because they're not agreeing with what the democrats want mm. and that's not all right uh, do we have anyone here that believes that basic health care should not be provided to people that can't afford it? Does anyone think that? No. No, not many no, people no. Uh, really <laughs> do think that. But l l let's move on. Uh, when will this shutdown look like it's going to end? Brian, tell us about that. 
Well, the shutdown will end right after the president signs a spending bill. It usually happens very soon after the shutdown begins because the president wants their doors to be reopened. However, that's not the case right now. Right. And uh, as of now, what happens is uh, the speaker could bring this to a vote in Congress. Uh, and it most likely, I, I think they did count potential votes, and it, and it would pass. The shutdown uh, would end, but uh, Speaker Boehner is refusing uh, to bring it to a, a vote. He's not putting his money where his mouth is. Uh, we, we do have a, an upcoming, seems like another upcoming crisis, the debt limit, right? Leah, why don't you fill us in? Well, <clears throat> a debt crisis is when the government has to spend money, but it doesn't have the legal authority to borrow any of the money to spend during the shutdown. And the government isn't given the legal authority to spend their money on anything other than non-essential services, even though a lot of times, like what recently happened, things can go up for a vote and can be introduced as things that they can be spending money on. Like, for example, when they gave all the people about 800,000 that had federal governments, promised them that once they got back to work, for all the time that they didn't get paid, they will get paid. Then there's other essential services like um, Medicare and Medicaid, and most importantly, things like welfare that the governments don't like so much that they're not going to let pass as a non-essential service. So right. unfortunately, a lot of important things aren't going to pass, and the government could run out of borrowing authority as soon as October 17th, so it right. doesn't look good right now. Right. And, and when we do talk about this debt ceiling, uh, we as a nation owe other countries in the world money. We, we do business. We borrow money and we, we, we lend money out. And we have a debt ceiling every year. We have a, a certain amount of money we're allowed to spend, and we're at that limit. But in order to pay the debts that we owe to the rest of the world, we do have to raise that debt ceiling. And the Republicans are refusing to do that, which would mean we can't pay the rest of the world. That would mean we would look uh, pretty bad and our cr credentials and credit would go down uh, in the world's eyes, which could uh, potentially cause uh, uh, catastrophic uh, implications for our economic system in the world. But uh, government services, right? Uh, Natalia, what do you have on that? Okay, so American citizens will still be able to get their mail even though the government is shut down because the U.S. Postal Service is an independent business unit. and national parks and their services will not be accessible during the shutdown and the entrances will be closed. And if you have to get a passport, the Dep Department of State says to do it soon because it has some funds outside the annual congressional appro appropriation. Mm -hmm. um, this service will remain operational as long as there is a significant amount of fees to support their operations. And the Smithsonian, the National Zoo, and the Holocaust Museum will be closed, but the private museums will remain open. And the patent and the, 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 the trademark office will remain open for at least four weeks before they run out of funds and will have to shut down. And the Food Safety and Inspection Service will remain, will continue its activities. However, the Food and Drug Administration will limit its activities but continue to watch conduct and recall its investigations. Mm, that's a problem. Uh, <laughs> Social security checks will be distributed in case anyone was wondering about that. Um, okay, let's talk about possible solutions. Uh, what we think as young students in history uh, that the government should be doing. Let's go right around the table starting with Alyssa. What do you think needs to get done? I think we need to morally focus on what's important and essential to the American mm. citizens rather than what the Congress and everyone thinks we should be doing. Mm. So I think the government should reopen so we can continue our essential services in protecting and pursuing the American life. Right, right. And, but who do you think should be the one that breaks? Should it be President Obama or the Republicans? Uh, personally, I think they're Republicans mm. because I think Obama stands very like <coughs> sternly on his opinions. Right. So I feel like they should agree that right. way. No, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, what about you, uh, Natalia? Possible solutions, sides? What do you have? Um, I agree with Alyssa okay. that we should just like 
have like a treaty or something and like agree on something. Uh, <laughs> should they should they make a pact? Should there be a government pact that this <laughs> that this it should end? Be. No, no, I, I see what you mean. I, I absolutely agree. Uh, do you think that it should be the president that breaks or the Republicans? Um, the Republicans, because Obama has like an idea and they're not supporting it. Right, and as far as ideas go, it's really not the worst of ideas. Basic health care yeah. is a you know a basic uh, need for uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I think we can all agree yep. yeah. uh, with that. Yeah. Uh, Leah, you you, uh, you seem to be very enthusiastic about this. You gave a pretty good uh, metaphor for what's going on here. What do you think the solution should be? I think the Republicans need to remember that the voters aren't children, they're mm -hmm. adults, and they all voted representatives to mm -hmm. decide on this matter. The bill went back and forth 40 times before it was finally voted into law. The Republicans lost, and they just need to admit it and back the Affordable Hair Care Act and right. stop saying things like the premiums will go up for everyone and you're <laughs> going to lose your health care. and. Right. You're not going to get to keep your doctor. They're just lying to the American people because they know that this is a great thing and it didn't come from them. Right, and, and most of these people that are saying that, uh, all of these people that are saying that have health insurance and very good health insurance, to say the least. Uh, Nisarg, what do you think should be done? I, I really think that Congress and Obama should come up with a solution pretty soon mm. because a lot of, with a lot of these services out of service right now, it's really going to affect us negatively now. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. No. Uh, for example, in Washington, uh, garbage is not being collected. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there is garbage sitting on the street there, uh, stinking. Okay, Brian, <laughs> what do you think should be done? <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, I think that I agree mostly with Alyssa that they should handle this as soon as possible mm -hmm. because we're talking about uh, life, and life and death of United States citizens, right. and they voted for representatives that would look out for their best interest. Right, right. And they're not doing that by having a childish argument about who did what and why not. Mm. Uh, do we all think that uh, Obama is right to stand firm on his opinion uh, on yes, this, yeah. on, in this case? Because uh, it, uh, from a Republican uh, point of view, they think he's the bad guy. They don't understand basic health insurance uh, for these uh, people that can't afford it. And they honestly think he's the bad guy. And he has given in once before uh, with regards to Obamacare, but this time he refuses uh, to let one of these fake deadlines uh, convince him and force him to uh, give in to Republican pressure. It's an interesting subject, guys. We've got to see where it goes. Um, really keep an eye on the debt ceiling, though. Uh, that's going to have some serious international uh, consequences uh, as far as how we look and our uh, credibility. Guys, any, any, but any opinions in there? No? No. No, no opinions in the control room? No? Oh, well. Uh, I was actually looking at a poll the other day. Uh, Congress's approval rating is 11%. It's wow. pretty low. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty low. And as far as keeping uh, the House uh, majority and the Republicans, it does not look like they're going in the right direction. I think the American people are going to take uh, what they're doing into consideration and uh, take that into consideration next time it's uh, time to vote. So, guys, it's been great. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to WHIT Radio's Jeffersonians. I was your host, Michael. We were with Aaliyah, Alyssa, Nisarg, Brian, Leah, and Natalia. It's been great, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you.